you all are really gonna enjoy checking out the vehicles that we're gonna showcase today. We're gonna take a look at a Toyota FJ Cruiser, a Jeep Wrangler with a third row, an overland built forerunner, and a rock crawling Jeep with a trailer. Yeah, and more. There's gonna be some cool vehicles in this episode. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and thank you for joining me today as we take a look at some very well-built off-road and overland vehicles that have been submitted by you. And I wanna say before we dive into this that I have just really enjoyed getting to know so many of you and checking out your vehicles through these video clips. It's really a very cool experience, something I didn't expect to come from this. It's been really awesome. Now, I do wanna mention that it's been difficult choosing which video clips to put in these videos. I've been getting a lot of great submissions. So many of you have some awesome vehicles and you did a really great job filming and editing them. And please continue to submit more and we'll do more of these. But just a reminder that no shaky video and that audio is gotta be clear, no wind noise. So that's very important. Okay. Let's check out the first vehicle, which is a Jeep Wrangler with a third row. This one's pretty cool. I'm Jeremy. I'm Erin. We are the McLarens, and we are a parents of five children and owners of a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Edition. And we love our Jeep. This is our sixth Jeep, right? You would know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is our sixth Jeep. In fact, we have seven now because we bought a new little YJ we're fixing up for our son. But this is our sixth Jeep. And the thing that probably makes this the most unique is the third row seat in the back. Uh, we've got five kids, and so in order to fit everyone, we had to add a third row, and now we can take all five on trips to Moab and other places, and we live here, right here in Utah, uh, close, only 10 minutes away from beautiful American Fort Canyon, and we are excited to show you what we love about our Jeep. Now, this Jeep is my daily driver, and while we live close to some great rock crawling and overlanding, every upgrade I'm doing is carefully considered to ensure it's going to increase performance and capability without significantly diminishing our gas mileage and our drivability. We kept the Rubicon anniversary front bumper. I actually really like the look of it, but I added a bull bar, a Smitty Belt 12,000 pound winch with synthetic line, and a Factor 55 fair lead and flat link to the front as well. Underneath, we have the Metal Cloak 3.5 inch lift, which has done really well both on road and off, Terraflex Falcon 3.3 piggyback shocks, I gotta tell you, I love the adjustability of the Falcon shocks. Uh, just made off-road and on-road both really, really nice. And then top it off with JCR inner fender liners, which I really like the look of them. Now we only did them in the front, we didn't do them in the back, but it's got a great look and we even paint matched the front little grill to match the rest of the Jeep. We're riding on a set of Rugged Ridge XHD wheels in gunmetal gray wrapped in 35 inch BFG KO2s. Now, I personally prefer all-terrain tires because they're quiet on the road. Again, this is my daily driver, but they still perform good on the rocks. We generally air down to about 15 pounds of pressure. And when we go on rock crawling trips, we'll actually add these metal rim protectors that we powder coated red to protect the wheels. And believe me, they have taken some abuse. To stop our tires from rubbing during articulation, we added some inexpensive flat fenders from EAG or E-Auto Grills. We actually really love the squared off look and shape these give to our Jeep. To carry enough gear for seven people, we added the Terraflex Alta Cargo Rack on the back with rotopacks for both water and fuel and installed the Smitty Belt Atlas side steps that pull directly into the factory rear door inches to give us easy access to climb up onto the top as we need to. We also fabricated our very own LED light brackets out of aluminum to allow us to mount four inch LED cubes on the side of the Jeep right in front of the rear view mirror. Gives us plenty of light while on the trail and it's easily controlled by our switch pod installed inside above the rear view mirror. In the back of the Jeep, we installed the JK Trail Gator from Outback Adventures. And while we don't have Marco's prowess in the camp kitchen, it does fit our Jetboil Base Camp dual burner stove perfectly letting us cook plenty of food for all those hungry kids. On the back roll bars, we mounted a fire extinguisher and power tank, as well as a brawly overhead light bar on the tailgate to illuminate everything in the back, whether we're cooking, camping, or just doing a little repair. We replaced the factory navigation unit with an aftermarket unit capable of Apple CarPlay and support for both front and rear cameras. 
those cameras really come in handy out on the trail, especially in steep areas or where it's inconvenient to get out and look where you're going. We collect patches from every adventure and put them up on the headliner kit in our Jeep. And as you can see, we've done a lot of fun things together. We also put our badge of honor badges on the side of the Jeep near the recon badging. And of course, we proudly support Overland Bound. To be able to fit all seven of us in a single vehicle, we added a third row using a Best Top Trail Max replacement seat for a YJ and made a custom bracket I built to raise it up so the kids can see out the front window. To keep their little heads from smacking on the roll bars or the power tank, we added four point harnesses. They love it back there, although sometimes they probably wish they had cup holders. Our family truly loves exploring this amazing state, and whether it's a simple day trip to Moab or long weekends overlanding to our favorite national parks, our Jeep takes us wherever we need to go. Oh, come on. A family of seven off-roading in a Jeep Wrangler. That's really cool. What a great Jeep. I love all the little details, but one of the little things that stood out to me was, did you see the little rear mirror that he put on the back of that A-pillar light? You know, it's little detail touches like that that I pull from other people, and I enjoy checking that kind of stuff out. Okay, next one is an FJ Cruiser. This one's pretty cool. Hi, my name is Matt. This is my daughter, Sierra. We're going to do a quick walk around on our FJ Cruiser here. This is the 2008 model year. Uh, we bought it brand new and we got about 150,000 miles on it. Uh, the purpose of this vehicle was to be just a family exploration vehicle. And so we really focused on the suspension to make it comfortable. So we're running the Total Chaos three and a half inch long travel kit uh, with King Remote Reservoir coilovers and triple bypass remote reservoir front shocks as well. The wheel and tire combo on this vehicle is a 35 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain with the method double standard wheels. To handle the extra weight of the wheel tire combo, we're running the 488 gear ratio. Uh, the rear end had a factory e-locker, so we still had that and we're hoping to upgrade to a front locker soon. For front armor, we have the DeMello steel front bumper. Uh, we have a worn winch embedded in there and a couple of lights. For underbody protection, we have the Ricochet full aluminum set. Goes all the way back to the gas tank. That's been holding up real well. On the side, you can see we have the Safari snorkel. Under the hood, it's pretty much stock. There's an upgraded battery and we upgraded all the wiring to like one aught, real heavy duty uh, copper, but um, a little bit larger alternator, but we left the rest stock. Uh, ARB awning and the Baja rack, uh, flat utility rack. If you've never seen inside one of these FJs, they're kind of funny. This what kind of drew me to the vehicle, as well as it's kind of a unique vehicle. I kind of enjoy the, the, the odd man out here, so. Uh, it's got a uh, real small interior. It fits a little baby in the back, but it's kind of about it. We put that little uh, dash bar there to hold some of our mobile devices. You can put an iPad in the center. We usually run Gaia. For comms, we are running a Yesu uh, 50 watt uh, ham radio, and then uh, we have a CB in there as well. For side armor, we have uh, DeMello's hybrid slider. Um, they're all real heavy duty stuff. Rear suspension is all total chaos, uh, links and, uh, King remote reservoir, two inch, two and a half inch shocks with, uh, King's air bump in the back. The rear tire carrier is pretty cool. We have room for a couple of jerry cans and then a roto packs. We have this little cutout here to run those front runner uh, water jugs and that's really cool because then you don't have to undo any of the jerry can tie downs when you want to get a sip of water. The roto pack uh, mounts right there and in the back we built a simple little structure to kind of in incorporate the fridge. The fridge is here on ARB's fridge slide. Uh, it's the 37 quart. It's the biggest one you can fit in the FJ with the back seat configured as it is. Um, but it, this whole structure 
as the ability to keep your gear mounted on top and still operate the fridge and a little bit of protection for the rear passengers from the stuff that's bouncing around in the back. Uh, the ARB uh, single air compressor is hard mounted in the side. And then we just keep the hose and a couple doodads here on the door. But this vehicle's been really reliable for us. We feel like it's a part of the family. It's really fun. Uh, my wife's an archaeologist and uh, we just like going outside and having fun. Brad, we really appreciate your channel and what you do for the community, sharing all of your videos. So uh, we hope to contribute and uh, be safe out there. Cheers. You know, I've always loved the FJ Cruiser. I really wish they would continue building that vehicle. And Matt, your daughter, she's a natural on camera. That was really cool. Look, I love that whole build. What I really like was that back structure that you built. That's really well designed. Nice job on that, man. Okay, next let's take, oh, here's one I've been getting a request for a lot. Finally, we're going to do a YJ. Check this one out. What's up, Brad? How are you doing? My name is John. I'm in Sacramento. And I love your trail recon page. Good job, keep up the good work, man. This is my Jeep Wrangler 1993 YJ. Six cylinder engine, straight line. I've had this Jeep for 20 years. And my brother also has a, a TJ that we sent you. I sent, I sent it to you before and I'm sure you saw it before. When I first bought this Jeep, I built this girl guard with my dad. I was 18 years old and he used to be a welder, welded everything together, put those lights, and I, those lights are not anything great. They're gonna get pulled out soon. I just got my license plate, a Jeep YJ done. I like that license plate. I got these Bushwhacker um, fenders on it that I really, really like because it gives you a lot of clearance. 15 inch method rims. I uh, went with the 15s because of the, uh, the cushion that you get on the tire when you're airing down. Um, I built the rack, the whole roof rack by myself. A lot of people ask me, like, is that like a Garvin rack? But it's not. It, looked like, it looks like a Garvin, but I actually just built it all myself. After my dad passed away, I picked up the uh, idea of welding and curving all the metal and stuff. I got it all done. Pretty solid. I like it. I put a ladder on the roof rack that I, helps me out to go up on top and pick up things. This is my propane tank. I love it. I love how it's, I set it on this side and not on the left side. I know Marco has it on the left side, but I don't know what's the reason about it, but I like it on my side, on, on, on the right side, just because when you open the tailgate and you pull out the table and you set your stove, your hose is literally just about two feet away. Um, I have the uh, bumper by Smitty Built. It's, uh, it's a XRC. It's uh, made for the TJs, but it actually works for the YJs also. And back here, when you open up, just like what you guys have going on in your Jeeps, I have the uh, table. And this table is, <clears throat> a lot of people ask me about it. It's for a, uh, it's for a JK. But I went ahead and measured my measurements and I ordered it. I think I picked it up from eBay at the time. And it works perfect. I love it. I cut up my vegetables over here, cook over here. I got my water feature when I'm done cooking. I need to wash something. I plug in my hose, I wash everything, and that way everything is in the kitchen. And <clears throat> back here, just in case fire goes up, you never know what happens. My fire extinguisher is right here. We uh, turn everything off, not have to worry about it. I changed out all my seats. I bought the uh, best top seats, I love them. Uh, I used to I used to have or, uh, the stock seats all ripped up. I changed them all. I changed the carpet. I got the uh, nice uh, bed rug. They're called bed rugs. And what's uh, what's nice about these is you can wash, you can clean, whatever you want to do. This is a uh, like the power tank, but this is my my Smitty built. My canopy is an ARV canopy. I'm sure you've seen these before. It extends out, and I turn the whole canopy into a tent where I can actually sleep inside. The reason why I don't have a rooftop tent is because I'm running a two-door Jeep Wrangler to, to run a, a rooftop tent and be able to carry all this, my, my material and goods and everything would be very hard. I need the roof rack for, for space. So I just use the outside 
as my tent. Inside the Jeep, over here, I changed, I put a new AC system on it. I didn't have AC for the longest time. Uh, once I got married, the wife started complaining she wants AC, so I got AC. Um, over here, I have my, my gun holders. I throw my guns up here when we go hunting. And down here, I actually, this is where I put my pistol when I'm going out. And uh, this is just for hunting, for protection. And that's about it. I changed, I went and got the uh, Tuffy security box. You lock it up, you don't have to worry about anything. So I did so much, I, I could talk all day. I know your time is valuable. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for having us on the page. And keep up the good work. And I love everything. And my, my regards to Marco. And hopefully one day we'll enjoy Marco's meals, man. Thank you so much. Oh, what a great looking YJ and John. Thanks for sharing that with us. And it's really cool that you built that grill with your dad and then you handcrafted that entire roof rack. Man, that whole Jeep is just well designed. Nice job on that one. I really enjoyed checking that one out. Okay, what do we got next? Oh, all right, we're going across the pond, guys. Check out this Toyota Hilux. Hi, I'm Guy from New Zealand and this is my 2008 Toyota Hilux SR5, three liter turbo diesel. Uh, we use it for going around New Zealand camping and off-roading when we get the chance. Uh, it's pretty awesome. In the cab we've got some black duck seat covers for when you get a bit muddy. A RAM mount for mounting my phone running Gaia GPS and an 80 channel UHF Uniden radio. And an extra horsepower or two on the roof. For tyres we're running uh, 31 inch uh, Cooper STT Pros on a 15 inch rim. They've got about 40,000 Ks uh, but they haven't skipped a beat so far but I'm planning on going maybe up to a 33 in the near future. As you can see they um, have taken us many places. Uh, snow, gravel, mud, anything you throw at them they never skip a beat. I've also got a set of rock armour rock slider side steps. Uh, these are a new addition but they've already proved their worthiness with a couple of scratches here and there. I plan on getting some underbody protection in the near future too um, just because we tend to uh, do a little bit of scraping here and there. We've got a 2 inch EFS heavy duty lift on it to cope with the extra weight. This has proved to be really comfy on and off road for all our travels we've done so far and it probably has about 20,000 k's on it. On the rear we've got a custom tub rack that I designed on a napkin and got built and on top of that we've got a Felden Shelter which is a New Zealand tent company uh, which has proved to be really really good quality for wherever we've wanted to take it. On the front we've got an X-Rox competition style bull bar uh, with some extra add-ons just uh, some cheap lights and a cheap winch which has uh, proved to get us out of trouble a couple of times. So that's about it for uh, the, the truck at the moment. There are a few things that I want to get in the future. A rear locker, some bigger tyres, a rear bar, and maybe a drawer set up in the uh, rear seat in the cab. But I'm going to leave you with a few uh, clips of us doing some off-roading here and there around New Zealand. Uh, and thanks Brad for the opportunity to highlight uh, people's vehicles in the time where we can't necessarily use them. Cheers. Right on. Guy, thank you so much for sharing that video with us. And I got to admit, my wife and I actually just last night were sitting on the couch watching YouTube videos about New Zealand. Man, I would love to rent a vehicle and spend a week exploring out there. You've got a beautiful place and you've got a great looking rig. Thanks for that video clip. Okay, now we're going to head out to the Trona Pinnacles and check out a rock crawler and a trailer. Smoking Joe, and this is my 2015 JK Rubicon and my 2019 Turtleback getaway trailer. Hey, so uh, let's talk about what's going on in the front here. Um, got a Genrite aluminum bumper 
with the uh, Warren Xeon 10S, rigid side shots, Factor 55 uh, fair lead with the Warren Sidewinder, okay? Underneath right here, Dana 44 uh, with uh, RCV inner axles and uh, gusseted and sleeved. Um, let's look under the hood. All right, got going on here is ARB twin compressor S-Pod and the big Jeep Optima, the uh, H6 battery. Uh, I also have uh, PSC, uh, the big bore box, all right, to drive my 37s. And uh, man, that's a really nice upgrade, all right? I'm running the Nitto 37-inch trail grappler. Okay, with trail ready bead locks with the rock ring. Uh, for shocks, I got the Falcon 3.3s. All right. And uh, in the rear, I went with the, uh, you know, four inch spring. Uh, I'm also running King bump stops in the rear. Uh, the four inch rock crawler spring on the X Factor, um, it really helped a lot with sag, with all the weight that I was carrying, uh, you know, overlanding. Um, for my sliders, I got the Poison Spider Brawlers in aluminum. So if you noticed, I've gone with an aluminum theme on this Jeep. And uh, I also went with uh, all my aluminum's polished. At the time, everybody was going powder coated. I just thought I'd go uh, a different route. But the sliders, everybody kept saying they were galling up um, on rocks. But man, this thing's been on the Rubicon twice. And, um, you know, yeah, it galls up a little bit, but you just take a grinder, slide it, you know, sand it down a little bit and you're good to go. Okay. Let's see what I got going on back here. So I got an ARB 50 quart, uh, two front runner boxes that have, uh, my, uh, fluids, uh, recovery gear and tools all located inside of it. Uh, up top, I have the, uh, high lift mounted behind the uh, roll cage on Dominion brackets I also have a My Medic first aid kit and a two pound fire extinguisher uh, located back here. Uh, a friend of mine made me a uh, plastic printed, this box for my uh, Blue Sea power station where I have some USB uh, charging back here now. Um, so that was cool. Cool options that I really love is uh, the Best Top Sunrider. Okay, I mean, I have, for those people that still want a hard top in the back you know you got this in the front and it just makes it so nice you get uh, best of both worlds and as you can see it only takes seconds to uh, open it and seconds to uh, close what's worked out nice also you know today's a beautiful sunny day out here ever been to the pinnacles uh it's a beautiful place but uh got the rhino rack 2.5 uh, awning this takes minutes to deploy um and uh it's real nice and convenient um, but let's talk about the turtleback trailer okay 2019 it's got a 23-0 byron uh rooftop tent on it fishing tube box all my electronics and onboard uh, AGM battery are all located in the nose box. Um, access hatch, uh, propane for the kitchen, and uh, extra propane back here for the uh, accessories. Okay, this trailer is running on Trail Grappler Nittos, 35 inch tires with. Uh, the Icon Timbron axle system, all right? And it's just, uh, again, been a really nice, nice setup. I'm also got a uh, Rhino Rack Batwing awning uh, and uh, a water heater. I didn't think I'd want the water heater, but you know, man, it is nice. I have to admit, you know, I thought I would uh, say no to it, but I went with it and been happy ever since. And in closing, I uh, appreciate you uh, checking out my video. 
And uh, as I always like to say, I wish you were here. Oh, uh, that Jeep Wrangler is a beast. And I love the polished aluminum on there. That's a really nice touch, something you don't see often. Done a great job with that build and then pulling that trailer, boy, you are capable and you can be self-sustained for a long time. Nice job on that build and thanks for your video submission. All right, what are we looking at now? All right, let's go take a look at a 4Runner. This one's pretty cool. Hi, Brad, I'm Craig from Michigan and this is my 2018 Toyota 4Runner. It's a TRD off-road edition. I went with the off-road edition because I wanted crawl control, I wanted the rear locking differential, and a track. Up in the front, I've got a southern style off-road bumper. It's got a Smitty-built X20, 10,000 pound winch. It's got the synthetic line, and I connected it to a Factor 55 flat link. Underneath the hood, I've left that all stock. I did add a Genesis off-road dual battery kit. I run Odyssey batteries, and then I made a little panel myself, little home-brewed panel for all of my relays and to just kind of keep everything clean. Mounted on the hood is my ham radio antenna. That is for my Anytone tri-band. I run a Icon Stage 2 lift kit. It has the Icon upper control arms, and also in the back, because of the amount of weight I carry, I use the three inch Overland Springs from Icon. Great suspension, couldn't be happier. I run a GRS Metalworks sliders and I went with the angled. I just think it hugs the body a little bit more and is easier to get in and out of. Inside the cab, I've got a H3R fire extinguisher. It's one of those aviation fire extinguishers that doesn't leave any residue. I've got a Midland MTX 275 GMRS radio. Used to have a CB, but when you run a GMRS radio, it's so much clearer. Distance and range is so much better. For $70, a 10 year license, there's no test. I run a Gaia GPS and I've mated that to a Garmin InReach Explorer to get the data. Up on top is a print suit. It's a 7 8 rack and up on that rack, I keep a case with a bunch of other uh, supplies and recovery gear and things like that. This is an Expedition 1 dual swing rear bumper. Mounted on that, I've got two roto packs, so eight gallons of an additional fuel, my high lift jack, my spare tire. I like the latching system on the Expedition 1. Here we've got a Dobinson dual drawer system and on my side over here i keep my recovery gear some more recovery gear tools um, battery booster box um, all that stuff that guys carry to help themselves and other people mama bear keeps on her side um, the partner stove her cleaning supplies um, kitchen stuff another fire extinguisher in case something happens we don't have to run up to the front we've got a dometic 50 liter refrigerator. As we get into camp, we've got a rock pail, 500 watt power station, and a uh, 100 watt solar panel to keep that charged. An alu box just has, you know, just miscellaneous trail stuff. And then I've got a Smitty built uh, air compressor. It's the 2781 air compressor, does a great job for me. Um, on the uh, panel there, that's an orange box fabrication panel. We have got our first aid kit, other um, gear for the air compressor, and things like that. We've got the KC uh, multi-function chase light, and um, that works great when you get in dusty conditions, uh, people can see you. Probably the most controversial thing that I did, I probably should have asked permission it would have been a lot easier than seeking forgiveness was my snorkel. It is 10% function, it's 90% cool. And let's face it, Brad, we do some things just because it's cool and it's grown on Mama Bear, she's okay with it now. Up on our Prinsu rack, we've got some more recovery gear, our uh, Max tracks and stuff like that. Brad, thanks for coming over and checking out my rig. Hope to see you out on the trail. Take care, everybody.
Oh, I really enjoyed that walk around. Greg, you're so well organized there in the back. It looks great. And I'm with you, man. Sometimes it's easier to ask forgiveness than it is permission, but I like the snorkel. Nice job on that one. All right, let's go check out a Wrangler that's submitted by Jason. This one's pretty cool. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Jason. I'm here in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and this is my new to me 2009 Rubicon Unlimited. Originally, I didn't think I would send in a video because as you'll see as we go around, I haven't done a whole lot to the Jeep yet. I just got it a month ago, but the way it looks now compared to the way it looked when I first purchased it, man, you guys have to see this. Overall, man, the Jeep looked great, but I had to deal with the camouflage and the horns. Well, it turns out the camouflage is actually a vinyl wrap. And after about 12 hours of some manual labor and an industrial size bottle of Goo Gone, I was able to get the wrap off and man, I was really shocked at how great the paint looked. All the factory stickers look brand new. There's not a scratch on them. Man, I could not be more excited about uh, my purchase and the possibilities of building this thing out. So when I bought the Jeep, it already had uh, this tire and wheel set on it, as well as the suspension. It's BDS shocks on a two and a half inch lift, 35 inch tires, 17 inch wheels. They are uh, mud terrain, but surprisingly ride very, very well. Uh, really quiet on the road and this will be built as more of a weekend warrior project. It is my everyday driver. So once I wear these down, I will switch over to an all-terrain tire. So one of the things I had to figure out was what to do with the hood after we got the horns off. There were four holes drilled into the hood about an eighth of an inch in diameter. Uh, they weren't centered at all. So uh, definitely a challenge to work around. But as I started looking online, different websites for different options, uh, I came across this hood vent and originally was going to try and install it myself but you do have to cut into the hood so i took it to a local body shop here in town they did a fantastic job the hood vent cost me less than 30 bucks uh, so man it, it not only does it look good uh, and took care of the holes that were drilled into the hood but it actually serves a purpose too keeps the engine compartment a little cooler which hopefully uh, keeps the engine from having to work so hard especially in the summertime with the air running but really happy with the way that looked and the way that turned out also inserted uh, these hood inserts. I'd heard, I read a lot of reviews uh, on this Jeep and one of the things that a lot of people complained about was when they hit birds, uh, they, the openings here were so big that they would go in and cause some damage to the radiator and stuff. So I really like the look of this flat black finish, uh, really ties in well with the hood vent, kind of pulls everything together. So again, another really cheap uh, purchase, mostly aesthetic, but a little bit of functionality in there i believe you should have both it should look good but it should work good uh, at some point want to switch out the factory bumper to a steel bumper with a, a winch installed and then to do a replacement on all the factory lights as well so on the back same thing as the front i would love to replace the factory bumper uh, with a steel bumper with some recovery points on there as well uh, maybe some additional auxiliary lighting definitely want to switch out the spare tire uh, mount that's on here right now. It actually does rub the bumper a little bit on the bottom, uh, which actually kind of helps to support the tire and keeps it really from rattling at all. It's very, very quiet, no movement at all. These had the factory plastic covers on them that match this right here. Uh, I took them off when I had to get the wrap off and really love the way it looked, how it tied in with the door hinges. So I left those off, but I did like the kind of plastic black trim. So the bottom corner on both ends of the top have damage to them like this. Still sealed well, no water getting in. Uh, so from a functionality standpoint, still works great. Aesthetics point, yeah, it drives me crazy. Uh, so at some point I will replace this with another hard top, maybe go hard top, soft top combo. All right, so as far as things that I've done on the inside, we put in these rugged ridge uh, grab bars. The interior was in great shape. The carpet is spotless and I, I do like having the carpet in the Jeep. Um, but the seats had some wear on them, some stains on them. Actually, the back seat had a little hole in it. I saw the leather swap out that Brad did on Trail Recon uh, from leatherseats.com and was going to go that route, um, but decided based on some of the other stuff I wanted to do, wanting to hang on to some of my money, I went with a lot cheaper route, went with the fabric um, kind of traditional slip over covers. But man, these textile seat covers look great. They feel great and will definitely be uh, you know, a great temporary solution between now and the time of actually swapping out the upholstery uh, for the leather. Uh, they had the factory carpet mats inside. Those were in great shape too, but I decided to go with the Mopar flush mats. I uh, really like the feel of the rubber a lot better. And man, the tread in these mats just really ties the whole Jeep together. I really like the way that looks. 
So that's it. I can't wait to get started on this thing and really build it out the way I want it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Jason, thank you so much for your submission. And I really appreciated your video editing and your photography on that one. A nice, nice submission. Thank you for that. And it's important for people to know that, look, you can have a very capable Jeep, but it doesn't have to be overly modified. So thanks for submitting that. I think it was important for everybody to watch. And I feel your pain on taking off a wrap. Man, that is super, super difficult. Okay, we're getting to the end of this, and so we've got one more to end with. This is actually one that's gonna put a smile on your face, and I think that's something we all need right now. I'll check it out here in a second, but I just wanna say thanks for watching. I hope you are all doing well, staying healthy, and hopefully we'll be back out on the trails soon enough. All right, Haley, take us to the end. Hi, my name is Haley, and this is a Hella Yellow Jeep Wrangler. And we're going to start with the KO2 37-inch tires. They're also method. And if you have, since you have this tire on the back, you can also replace it with this tire pops. You could just replace it with this tire. And then we go to the stubby antenna. And it's really cool because it's just a little decoration that's really cool. And then we have the Terraflex. Terraflex because it, the Jeep ride nice. it makes the Jeep ride nice. And then we have the, the Fox Shots. And it makes the Jeep ride smooth. And then if we go here, we have these really bright headlights. So when you're like at nighttime and you can't see, you can just see what you're doing. You also have this steel bumper. It's really cool because it's a bumper and you can just pump stuff. And then if you come all the way over here, we have the sun riser up there and you could lift it and that is the end. Bye. Thank you.